CBS 8's Jenny Day. Welcome to Around San Diego. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. First of all, though, go Aztecs. We're certainly rooting for you. We do begin, though, with more wet weather. Really, though, it's been a lot for our standards. Nice change, and we need the rain, but we are now certainly dealing with the cleanup. This comes after another atmospheric river dumped even more rain across the county and left some areas areas underwater. Portions of State Route 78 were closed as crews conducted emergency sinkhole repair work. And even right now, the stairs leading down to Jarabek Park and Scripps Ranch are closed due to a sinkhole that is formed. In Del Mar, another sinkhole opened up on San Diego Drive next to the lagoon. And a sinkhole that opened up in Cardiff is getting even bigger. The city of Encinitas says that repairs on this one will have to last through April. And part of a block Luff is sitting on San Alejo State Beach after it collapsed on Thursday afternoon. This all happened at the edge of the North Beach day use parking lot. Several parking spots are roped off now because of those unstable bluffs. Witnesses told first responders that they did not see anyone close by when the slide happened, so the search for any victims was called off. And barricades also briefly blocked access to a stretch of Sandia Creek Drive north of Fallbrook as well. After water spilling over from the river flooded that road, a former lifeguard says that this part of the Santa Margarita River has been the site of emergency rescues in the past. Some of my coworkers have actually been to this spot with a truck that got swept off and it was caught with people on top of the truck and so they saved their lives. But yeah, it's not the truck's life though. Not the truck's life. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Ooh, yes, so if you encounter a flooded roadway, you have heard this. First responders really urge you to simply turn around, reminding you that flood waters can rise rapidly and unexpectedly. And take a look at La Jolla. Miralins Drive is back open after the storm sent this giant tree to the ground. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The tree did block the road for quite some time, but crews were able to get it all cleaned up. And you've got to see San Clemente. Residents who live on a crumbling cliffside in Orange County were given one hour to move belongings out of their homes. Two patios completely disappeared. Now officials have red tagged those properties. With more rain on on the way, officials say that safety, of course, is the number one concern. We are learning more about the Ponga boat smuggling incident that left at least eight people dead near Black's Beach in San Diego last weekend. It's being called one of the deadliest maritime smuggling incidents California has ever seen. Mexico's consulate general in San Diego says that seven of the eight people who died are presumed to be from Mexico. Immigration rights advocates believe anti-asylum measures cause people to put their lives at risk. This keeps happening, and it's because there isn't a possibility for many individuals to simply show up at the ports. The authorities will say that, but it's not possible. Advocates say federal policy needs to be changed. The Mexican consulate is working with the authorities involved to identify these victims. And construction is now underway on the new 30-foot border wall at Friendship Park, just as Border Patrol agents found the body of another person nearby. CBP officials did not say if the person was trying to cross the border, but activists argue it's a sign of what's to come if the new wall goes up. Major trauma units have indicated that there has been a five-fold increase in uh, injuries related to border wall falls. The Mexican consulate... Of the yeah, families in Tijuana and San Diego will still be able to communicate through a fence there at that spot. And President Biden capped off a historic day in San Diego with a fundraiser in Rancho Santa Fe. Earlier on Monday, Biden was joined at Naval Base Point Loma by the Prime Ministers of Australia and the United Kingdom. The three nations, which formed a partnership 18 months ago known as AUKUS, are accelerating plans to provide Australia with nuclear-powered submarines. Marines. This is all in an effort to help counter China's military buildup of the Indo-Pacific region. Again, the president then made his way from San Diego to Monterey Park in Los Angeles County to discuss gun control. No more silence. No more silence. 
Students from across the county marched calling for action against gun violence. They say more needs to be done because they are tired of going to school in fear. Their march came hours after President Biden signed that executive order aimed at reducing gun violence. The U.S. averages 40,000 gun deaths a year. So on Tuesday, President Biden signed an executive order to strengthen background checks. He made the announcement in Monterey Park where 11 people were killed in January while celebrating the Lunar New Year. The executive order increases the number of background checks that will be conducted before a firearm can be sold. It also increases the use of red flag laws. That allows courts to temporarily deny guns to people perceived to be threats to themselves or others. The order addresses the loss or theft of firearms during shipping, asks the Federal Trade Commission to analyze gun marketing and increases federal support for gun violence survivors. The White House says this is the most comprehensive gun control policy the president can enact without Congress. At the rally in downtown San Diego, students held signs saying enough is enough. We deserve to feel safe. We deserve to not have grown up in fear. We will not accept these events as our reality and we will not grow numb to mass shooting. We now live in a generation where the leading cause of death for Americans under the age of 18 is gun violence. Yeah, opponents say stricter gun control laws infringe on their constitutional rights, so participants encourage them to offer their own solutions and have a conversation on the topic. The Gun Violence Archive says that the U.S. has already surpassed 110 mass shootings this year, leaving more than 150 dead. The president then flew to Las Vegas to talk about the White House's plans to lower prescription drug costs. Well, we are learning more about a South Bay home where police say a kidnapped woman managed to escape and a dead body was there inside with her. The man accused of the kidnapping in Palm City is behind bars. A 43 year old woman told police that a man had kidnapped her at gunpoint at Palm Avenue and Saturn Boulevard. She says that she was then held captive for 24 hours and sexually assaulted before escaping. An unidentified body of a dead woman was also found inside that home on Citrus Road. Our neighbors are shocked just as we are, you know, and I don't know, I've heard people wanting to move already <laughs> because of this, um, because it is a scary thing. 44-year-old Rafael Bondo was arrested for sexual assault and kidnapping. Police say this is an ongoing investigation and say it's still unclear how the woman found inside that home died. Well, a woman once honored as Teacher of the Year is behind bars, facing 15 felonies and 29 years in prison if convicted. Jacqueline Ma is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a former student. The National City teacher pleaded not guilty to those charges on Monday and was not offered bail. The Lincoln Acre school teacher, Jacqueline Ma, had been an elementary school teacher for 10 years. She is now accused of threatening a former student to have sex, as well as possessing child pornography. The district attorney says she sent illicit photos of herself and directed the alleged victim in this case to do the same. Prosecutors are still waiting on warrants on numerous electronic devices, but said in court the relationship between the 34-year-old teacher and 12-year-old student started in December of last year and then lasted up until her arrest last week after the boy's mom came forward with her suspicions. They say Ma groomed him, helped him with homework, and bought him gifts, then started using messaging apps to avoid detection, and ultimately then made advances on him in her classroom. Prosecutors say that on the day that Ma was arrested, she reached out to the boy. This defendant was obsessive. When she was arrested, she had a photograph of the victim in her wallet. She had jewelry with his initials. Love letters were discovered in her classroom, directed at the child. Jacqueline Ma's family was there showing support for her in court, including her husband. The court again, though, deemed her a danger to society and a potential flight risk because she is facing 29 years in prison if convicted. 
Well, concerned parents are calling on the Lakeside Union School District to take action. They say children with special needs were physically abused by a teacher's aide at Lemon Crest Elementary. Parents say a handful of other children have been physically abused on several occasions, but no action has been taken. Parents we spoke to say they reported the incident to the San Diego County Sheriff's Office. They say any allegations of abuse will be investigated. Parents are demanding the district be more transparent. It just makes me so mad because how can you just let somebody get away with hurting a child? Dealing with special needs is hard and if you don't have that patience, you shouldn't be working with them. Yeah, parents say the teacher's aide has since been moved to another school. The district, however, has not confirmed or denied if he was transferred. Well, it happened more than 25 years ago, and it still is the largest mass suicide on U.S. soil. 39 members of a cult called Heaven's Gate were found dead inside of a Rancho Santa Fe mansion. So right now you can watch a CBS 8 special digging deeper into what happened that day. I remember it well. So from videos that the victims made before their suicide to our first stories from the scene, about 30 minutes of footage that we put together in, a, in one special and you can watch it for free on our CBS 8 plus app on Roku and Fire TV. Well, ratepayers let their anger be known as the California Public Utilities Commission held more virtual hearings about SDG&E's proposed budget increase for the next few years. If approved, it would increase how much you pay on your bill. You're killing families, small businesses, and once again, you're killing our state. The answer from the public is no more. They're unreasonable, unjust, and frankly, unconscionable. Yeah, SDG&E wants more than $3 billion to spend on various projects, operations, and maintenance between 2024 and 2027. We found electric customers would see their bills increase by more than 5%, while gas customers would see a 17.5% increase. There are two in-person hearings being held on Thursday, one at 2 p.m. and another at 6 at the Sherman Heights Community Center. People who want to speak will have to fill out a speaker's form there on site so they do recommend arriving early. We have all of this information on our website cbs8.com. Well starting next month homeowners will have to pay more to get rooftop solar panels. This comes after a decision made by the California Public Utilities Commission. It mostly affects those who do not yet have solar. This new change includes the net metering program which allows users to connect their solar systems to the grid. Right now users get bill credit for the solar energy they send back to the grid but starting April 15th the value of the bill credit will drop significantly. Significantly. If it's 25 cents that they would charge you, they give you 25 cent credit. So then it offsets your bill. What's happening is they're going to still charge you 25 cents for that kilowatt hour that you consume, but give you four cents for any kilowatt hour that you that you produce and send to the grid. If you miss the April 15th deadline to submit an application for a new solar system, you can still take advantage of the federal investment tax credit. It's a 30% discount off of your solar and battery. Well, more scrutiny for San Diego's ambulance provider, Falk. Despite promises of improvements, complaints about long response times are piling up. The city wants to make changes to Falk's contract to ensure ambulances make it to San Diegans in a timely manner. The contract amendment will require Falk to subcontract with a second ambulance provider. The fire chief wants an agreement to be made next month. At that time, we will either bring a final agreed upon amendment with the financial terms that the city has proposed on the table, or we will ask you for direction according to whatever legal options we have within the contract. The fire chief is asking for a special meeting to happen in April to, gr to agree upon the amendment to Falk's contract. Well, after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last week, followed by the closure of Signature Bank over the weekend, many are concerned about how secure their money is. President Biden has assured Americans that there will not be another financial collapse. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC, helps provide assurances as long as a bank is 
is insured by the FDIC. Depositors are guaranteed protection for up to $250,000. If you do have more than a quarter million dollars in one bank, experts say it really is best to split those deposits among different institutions. You could have you know multiple accounts then at at, uh, at different banks, and uh, uh, that then will will help you then uh, keep under that keep under that threshold. In the wake of in the wake of these bank failures, the Federal Reserve may decide to hold off on raising interest rates when it meets next week. And you need to apparently earn $79,000 to live comfortably in San Diego. That's according to a new study from Smart Asset. And that's just for one person with no children. Just last year, though, I get this, at this same time the study was done, it said we only needed to make $65,000. That's a 21% jump in the cost of living. San Francisco came in just one spot ahead of us, requiring $84,000 to live comfortably. St. Louis was named the most affordable metro area. The annual comfortable income there is 57 grand. Well, San Diego County is moving forward with developing an app in hopes of helping people experiencing homelessness find shelter beds. The Board of Supervisors voted on the proposal from District Attorney Summer Steffen. Anyone who comes into contact with a person experiencing homelessness can use the app and get people connected with resources. The DA's office says that the app would allow organizations to take a person's needs into consideration, such as if they have children or pets or a disability. It will take about six months and $300,000 to develop. Well, a new study from chamberofcommerce.org found that San Diego and Oceanside are closer to shrinking the gender pay gap. The study says the average pay gap in the U.S. is a little over 11,000 a year. In the city of San Diego, that gap is 9,000. And in Oceanside, it's just $26, the smallest gap across the nation. It's progress, but there is still a way to go. Gender pay equity really affects all women, but especially um, Latina and black women most often. For more information on this study, head to cbs8.com. Meantime, city officials are working to create a budget for the next fiscal year, but the process involves a different approach. According to the city, each department head has been assigned an equity-centered coach. All employees have been given equity training, and the city's budgeting software has been upgraded to evaluate decisions based on equity. The new approach is to make leaders more aware of the sharp disparities like Barrio Logan. I think the mayor should put more boots on the ground and come out here and show his face. Um, we have a lot of big projects going on that I know they want to do for uh, low-income housing and stuff that I've been seeing, um, but there's other stuff that we need as well. The city council has a deadline of June 12th to finalize the budget for fiscal year 2024, which begins July 1st. Well, as apex predators, mountain lions travel across large areas looking for food and mates. But here in California, where there are high density human populations, roads and highways are now closing off these pathways. As a result, mountain lions are dying at an alarming rate. But as our Sean Stiles tells us in this Earth 8 report, a study by UC Davis has some solutions. In a new report put out by the Road Ecology Center in UC Davis, it talks directly about how mountain lions are dying at an alarming rate here in California, trying to cross freeways and highways like this. In the past year, nearly 70 of the big cats have lost their lives. Mountain lions being hit by cars has been going on probably ever since there were cars on highways in California. Fraser Schilling is the director for the Road Ecology Center at UC Davis. In California, we have so much traffic, so many roads, that where mountain lions are moving, we've built barriers. We've built road barriers, so concrete, and we've also built moving barriers, and that's the traffic. And that could just stop them from going where they need to go, or it could kill them when they try to go there. As apex predators, mountain lions traverse large areas looking for resources. This usually means they have to cross roads. They might be really hungry. They're in search of a mate. They're a young mountain lion dispersing away from an adult mountain lion, and sometimes that puts them in conflict with the road. Some of the highest death rates for mountain lions occur where human populations are the largest. 
the San Francisco Bay Area, and here in Southern California. In the case of mountain lions in Southern California, that is critical because so many of them are getting killed that the populations are always at risk of, of winking out, essentially. In other words, micro-extinction from an area, which is the case for the most famous mountain lion, P-22, who was photographed under the Hollywood sign. He was euthanized in December after a car strike. At just over one mountain lion being killed a week in California from being hit by a car, Schilling says now is the time to help these big cats and other animals by providing wildlife crossings. Getting them safely across the road, and that's where wildlife crossings come in, which is something we know how to build, we know how to make them effective, and therefore they are a solution for wildlife. Wildlife crossings can go over freeways like the Wallace-Annenberg crossing planned to go over the 101, or they can go under which are essentially tunnels to get wildlife from one side to the other. And they're almost always associated with fencing. So you have fencing plus a crossing structure. And now there's funds to do that. But recently the Wildlife Conservation Board and the state has invested quite a bit into planning new wildlife crossing structures. We can build our way out of this with more fencing and wildlife crossings. This is just one of over a half dozen wildlife corridors here in San Diego, providing access for animals to pass underneath very busy roadways and highways in the county. It provides that safe passage for animals to go from one open space to another along with the fencing. Soon to be built, an overpass wildlife corridor in the Temecula area. Sean Stiles, Earth 8. Yeah, somehow we have to coexist, right, Sean? Thank you. Well, speaking of, here's a look at those heroic efforts to try and save a pregnant beached whale in Carlsbad. That's right, we've learned that she was pregnant. A huge group of people came together to help SeaWorld personnel carry the pygmy sperm whale up the rocks to a waiting transport vehicle where buckets of water were waiting. Sadly, though, she did not survive. It really was a remarkable effort to save her. What started with a group of 10 people turned into about a hundred carrying the whale in a sling for about a quarter of a mile all the way up those rocks and into a SeaWorld rescue transport truck. Definitely a smaller whale, but SeaWorld says that it was an adult, maybe even 20 years old, that was nine to 10 feet long and weighed 600 to 900 pounds. The tide was really high on Thursday and in this particular area, it's very rocky. We did see some blood on the whale, but no obvious signs of trauma. We spoke with a swimmer who says he saw it and tried to guide her back out to sea, but kept returning to shore. I'm definitely full of emotions. Um, my passion is fish and wildlife. Uh, seeing this whale kind of gave me like a firsthand opportunity to, you know, help something that really needed help and kind of use that passion to my benefit, um, staying with this whale and really trying my best to help it. Yeah, the biggest threats to these whales are getting tangled in fishing gear or even trash in the ocean or getting hit by a boat. So the next steps will be to figure that out. The whale has undergone a necropsy at the Southwest Fisheries Science Center. Really, the love that San Diego has for marine life is so apparent. SeaWorld literally reached out to me to pass along their gratitude to all who helped with those efforts. Speaking of, SeaWorld's Arctic Rescue is almost ready for riders. The new roller coaster is expected to open sometime this spring. For two minutes, passengers will go through a chilly adventure at speeds of up to 40 miles per hour and 30 feet above the ground. The coaster is built on 2,800 feet of track. Arctic Rescue was designed to raise awareness of the threats that Arctic sea life face from climate change. Well, a San Diego couple is hoping to find the kind of pe the, the kind people who helped save them from a near deadly car crash. CBS aides Ariana Cohen talked with the couple and explains how their date night took a really unexpected turn. I spoke to a local couple after they say their date night nearly turned deadly. It was a foggy Saturday night when Uriel Lopez and his girlfriend Dominique Hernandez were headed to the movies in Poway. Suddenly, he says somehow his truck fishtailed near Highway 67 and Poway Road. Blood pressure up sure through the roof. Your adrenaline's, uh, you know, skyrocketing. Driving towards oncoming traffic before going down this curve, flipping over and landing on the driver's side in this embankment. We just started plowing through trees and over rocks um, until the truck finally came to a stop at the, at the end of the ditch. 
you know, where it, where it flipped over on its, on its roof. Like, I guess that curve is kind of notorious for, uh, for people ending up in that ditch. We went across um, the highway, so the other side would be oncoming traffic was like coming at me. Um, so that was already scary in itself. Lopez helped his girlfriend get out of the truck through the window. They both got out of the wreck unscathed. I checked myself real quick and I was actually really surprised and nothing happened, uh, especially because we went through, like I said, went through a couple little trees uh, over some boulders and whatnot. And it's all thanks to some good Samaritans who pulled over to help. Lopez says he connected with a man on Facebook who helped him get to safety after the crash. This guy, Tim Moyer that uh, I found out about Monday. I found out his name. Um, he was there to help me out. You know, he, he gave me his hand and, you know, he helped me get out of the out of the ditch as well. They are also hoping to find the kind couple who helped them as well. He went down and she took me up the rest of the way. And so she was really nice to just be there and like, you're going to be OK. Are you OK? Like she was looking around me, like to make sure I wasn't bleeding anywhere that I didn't see. Um, and it was just nice having her there for a second, like just a regular person too, and just her helping. They say they are grateful for this second chance at life and want the couple to hear this message. Honestly, just, you know, thank you from the bottom of our heart. Um, it's a dangerous situation, right? Yeah, I'm hoping to find them just so I say thank you, you know, um, maybe have dinner with them. Ariana Cohen, CBS 8. Wow, to walk away from that, just truly remarkable. Ariana, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, seniors living alone in San Diego County may have hundreds of friends that they're unaware of. As we take you in the Zevely Zone, Jeff previews Elder Help's Essence of Life Awards and Charity Auction. I'm hosting an event this Sunday with Elder Help with a special lady in mind. For nearly 50 years, Elder Help has supported seniors, tangerines, oranges, live independently in their own homes. 90% of most of us do want to stay in our homes as we age and get older if we can, and most of us can't afford the means of long term care. Deb Martin, the CEO of Elder Help, had a special connection with her mother, Jane, as I did with my grandmother, Ethel. What's your story about Ethel and your relationship with her? My grandma's husband, my grandfather, died in a car crash. She lived alone her entire life. And we helped her live alone for decades. She probably couldn't have done that without all of you either. And it's so hard for people to imagine what it's like if people don't have family. And what does it look like if they don't have a Jeff or a Deb showing up? Elder Help creates a customized plan for every senior, providing food, home maintenance, and sometimes just a friend. Once we get to a certain age, uh, we become invisible, especially because we're isolated living at home. Chris Mursky, the transportation coordinator, says hundreds of volunteers deliver food to seniors in 40 San Diego County zip codes. Amazing group of people that have stepped up in a absolutely incredible way. This Sunday, Deb will be my co-host as we honor Elder Help's award-winning volunteers and corporate sponsors. If I start flubbing up there, you'll cover for me? Oh, absolutely. Okay, you kidding? Good. And vice versa, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. We'll be partners. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday <laughs> Angels! Oh. That same team spirit comes alive every <laughs> December with Elder Help's <laughs> Holiday <laughs> Angels program. Virginia is blind, but some gifts are so special, it's what you feel, not what you see. Poinsettia is, that is, it touches your heart. <laughs> I used to give my grandmother a poinsettia on Christmas, too, and it's people like Deb Martin who love every senior like their own. I just do, for the same reasons that you mentioned. In the Zevely Zone, Jeff Zevely, CBS 8. So heartwarming, truly, Jeff, thank you. If you are interested in learning more about Elder Help or want to get um, the jump on their charity auction, you can just click on the help button on CBS8.com.
Well, for the first time in 30 years, the U.S. has a new top dog. The American Kennel Club says the French Bulldog has overtaken the Labrador Retriever for most popular breed. I have a lab, but oh, that Frenchie is so cute. Labs have had that spot for over three decades. Frenchies have climbed the list over the years. They hit number 14 in 2012 and then number two in 2021. They are small in size and have a quiet demeanor and really don't need as much exercise as big dogs. But as a flat faced breed, they are prone to breathing problems. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for staying informed. Join me each week as I take you around San Diego. Once again, go Aztecs. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day. Take good care of yourself.